good evening everyone. Uh, so we will be talking about Dast Tanvoy today. As, uh, how many of you know about Dast Tanvoy? Great, great, great. So finally, I think the Bible tricks are giving us some results out here. So uh, Dast Tanvoy is the art of Urdu storytelling which was lost. And it's as uh, the, people, the guy who actually introduced the whole concept. It's a compound of two Persian words. One is Dastan, which means an epic tale. And the second word is Goi, which means reading aloud. And Dastan Goes are the people who recite these tales. Dastan Goi uh, are basically epic narratives. They are, they are medieval romances, as we have heard various other medieval tales, tales from uh, these medieval centuries. These are tales of warfare, these are tales of adventure. These are tales when uh, new worlds were being mapped and new horizons were being searched for. These are tales where, uh, where sorcerers go on with key quests and uh, armies of Ayas stop them. And also sometimes these are tales which are uh, well full of profanity. There were many Dastans, but the Dastan that stood out from the very beginning was the Dastani Amir Hamza and I'll ask you to tell us a little bit about what exactly it was. Alright, well, so Azreen, who knows, he knows, and who doesn't know, he knows. That Dastani Amir Hamza, the name of Dastani Amir Hamza, in which Amir Hamza, or the Sahib Kira, the name of Amir Hamza, the name of Amir Hamza, the name of Amir Hamza, खाने काबा सरदार खाने काबा खाजा अब्दुल मुत्तलिब के बेटे हैं और हजरत मोहम्मद के पैगंबर मोहम्मद के चचा लगते हैं और ये बुराई से लड़ते हैं और उन शहजादों से उन साहिरों से और उन देवों से जो खुद को खुदा बनाते हैं और झूठ की परस्तिश करते हैं उनसे ये लड़ाई करते हैं और इनका साथ इन जंगों में इनके बचपन का साथ ही अमर अयार देता है अयारी क्या है हम आपको अभी आगे बताएंगे So basically what you were just trying to tell here is that Amir Hamza was the protagonist of Dastani Amir Hamza He is supposedly the uncle of Prophet Muhammad And he fights against sorcerers, the evil sorcerers who do not believe in true God Dastani Amir Hamza became popular in India when Emperor Akbar commissioned an artistic project called Hamza Nama which was a very unusual picture project in the sense that there were 1200 folios involved in it and each of these folios was almost a yard and a half by a yard in size with the text inscribed in the back of the folio and the narrators used to stand behind these panels and recite the tales and whenever the story progressed the folio was changed accordingly just to give an example if I was to recite this very folio which we are seeing here on this slide I would say that शहर में कला तुम देखकर अमर ने लूटना शुरू किया और जो एक आधे साहिर को आधा जाता देगा खंजर निकाल के उसके कंधे पर चढ़कर आगे जो साहिर था उसका गला काट दिया और जिसके कंधे पर चढ़ा है ना तो उसे शहर याद आता है और ना अमर को पकड़ने की तरकीब भी कर पाता है ना फ्रॉम व्हाट द डिस्क्रिप्शन अंकित गेव यू इट मे सीन दैट दिस दास्तान वर फुल ऑफ लॉट वायलेंस और परहाप्स आई कैन कॉल दैट वॉरफेयर बट दैट वाज ओनली वन ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स दैट कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड दास्तान दिस एलिमेंट वाज कॉल्ड रास्म रास्म इंप्लाइड द एलिमेंट ऑफ वॉरफेयर द एलिमेंट ऑफ व्हाट वी मे आल्सो परहाप्स कॉल वील रास्म और वो जो नहीं थी नाउ after that, the second element, which was till about the 16th century when these Dastans were prevalent in, in, in Persia and, and in, in uh, places that were ruled by the Arabs, uh, the second element was Basm. Now, Basm is uh, about uh, beauty, love and seduction. So, but then uh, in the 18th century, or near about 1730, uh, we get from historical records that uh, a very fine piece of literature was published in India called uh, Bosnane Khayal by uh, Muhammad Bin Taki. And this fine piece of literature had immense uh, influence on the Dastan Goi tradition in India. And it was uh, this uh, Bosnane Khayal that brought about two new elements into the Dastans being number one, the listening which I'm, I'm sure a lot of us would be familiar with the term Tillerson, a uh, magical realm. I mean, I'm sure we must be familiar.
familiar with Harry Potter and, and the world that goes around there. And the second one was Ayari. Now Ayari is uh, tricksters. Ayari, <coughs> the, the Ayari is, is, is the craft affected by Ayars. Ayars are, Ayars are cheaters, Ayars are people who disguise themselves, who steal, who are thieves. But then, they are the two gooders. They are always on the good side, they are in the side of Amir Hamza and fight the bad guys. And the image that you see on this slide is of Amar Ayyar who is also known as Shehen Shahi Ayyaran because he was the king of all the Ayyars. So as you just said, Razman, Bazan, Tilisman, Ayyari, together all these four elements took Dastani Amir Hamza to a totally different level and Mirza Ghalib, the famous poet, who was exceedingly fond of Dastani Amir Hamza once wrote to a friend in a letter that today I have acquired six chapters of Hamza Dastan and 16 casks of wine. What more do I want from life? <laughs> and uh, in the mid 19th century, we see that Dastan boy flourished further and entrenched all the northern parts of India. In fact, we also get to know that every Thursday at the steps of Jama Masjid, all the Dastan goes gathered and they used to recite these tales. In fact, even the mutiny of 1857 was not able to disrupt the growth of Dastan Goi. And historian Sharar tells us that when some of the Dastan Goes from Delhi migrated to Lucknow, in fact, every nobleman in Lucknow made it a practice that he was employing a Dastan Goi for himself. Now, uh, coming to the statement on screen, it says, Ki tehreer mein ho, ki tehreer mein lutfe takhreer. Now, Tehreer is the written form and Takreer is what you decide, the oral form. Uh, this is a statement that we find in the accounts of uh, a very uh, famous and perhaps one of the most uh, renowned Dastan goes, Muhammad Hussain Jab. Now, what he means here is, uh, like Ankit told you, that Dastan goes had started to gather in Lucknow and it was in Lucknow that uh, such an amalgamation of beautifully creative uh, minds, they uh, uh, came to be improvising on these tales. So, the structures that we had followed on from the previous centuries, which had come on, uh, which had come into India from uh, Persia, from Indonesia, from elsewhere, were now uh, worked upon. The basic structures remained the same, but then uh, Indian uh, Dastan goes borrowed heavily from uh, the local traditions, the local troops, the local themes, such as the Bostani Khyal that we talked about. And originally, Dastanya Amir Hamza was only one volume long, but these Dastan goes, they stretch it to the extent that it became 46 volumes of text, each around 1000 pages long. Now, that, that is, uh, uh, I would again like to come back to the statement. Tehreen, like I said, is the written form and Takreer is the oral form. What uh, Mohammed Hussain Jha meant when he used that statement was that Dastan Goi, as a tradition was so rich as an oral, oral tradition that they wanted when, when they were sitting down and uh, documenting these states, transcribing these states, writing them down, they wanted the same amount of pleasure that one, uh, that one got uh, from hearing these states as an audience, uh, they wanted the same amount of pleasure to be derived when one read these states. So these states were not uh, first written down and then recited in a manner, these states were orally recited and accordingly. Documented. So basically what we see here is that the performative tradition of Dastan Goi evolves to a different to a great extent in the sense that while we can say that they were written records in the terms of say guidebooks which outlined the plot and the main characters of the story, it was the Dastan Goi who actually supplied body to the, to the, to the text while reciting the story. And I think that is what uh, made Dastani Amir Hamza really appealing. Just to give you an example, before every episode of Dastan starts, it starts with flourishing Urdu. So, you just will tell you how it starts. Like. So for, for instance, uh, uh, the, the Bajpan game, uh, the, there is a game which talks about Bajpan of Amir Hamza and Amar Ayyar, that begins uh, with uh, It fale sawar hatra hai madar, maidane ardas ne yu chola hai. Talashe Mazamir in the chest Amir of Amar ke Maktab me Har Taraf Tamahe. To quote Musharraf Ali Farki's translation of what you just recited, 
Children on reed horses gallop about the pages, inscribing within drops the delightful episodes of Hamza and Amr's days at the academy. Now, uh, what we see here is the cover page of a book. When uh, in, in, in the 19th century, Dastan goes after the mutiny of 1857 and otherwise started uh, gathering in Lucknow, one of our uh, very important and uh, well renowned publishers of Lucknow, Munshi Naval Kishore of the Munshi Naval Kishore Press, he gathered these Dastan goes like uh, Mohammed Senja and Emil Senja and and uh, instructed them to uh, transcribe, to document these dastans. And, and here started a process that lasted for almost 25 years and resulted into the one of the longest uh, epics, the uh, longest epic tales. Yeah, the longest, the, the longest uh, fictional narrative ever composed anywhere in the world. That is what so this was the 46 text. volumes of text, and this happens to be. Uh, one of the books, one of the existing books uh, from those volumes and it was published in 1881. But things change. Things change in the sense that when new forms of entertainment come, when cinema comes into the picture, when parts in theatre comes into the picture, the tastes of people also change. And that is when we see that Dastan, Dastan and Dastan's decline to a certain extent, even Urdu critics Following colonial dictates, what they do is they start undervaluing Dastani Amir Hamza, even condemning him to a certain extent. And in 1928, uh, what happens is that 1928, Mir Bakhar Ali, who was the last famous Dastan of India, he died, and with him, this art form was also lost by us. And even the collection of the 46 volumes of text was scattered, and today it only lies with one person in the world, and that is. Shamsul Rahman Farki. Uh, Mr. Shamsul Rahman Farki uh, happens to be, yes, the person with the 46 volumes of Dastan Yami Ramza that were published by Munshi Naval in 1881. He also happens to be uh, a very renowned Urdu scholar and a critic who has uh, researched and worked extensively on Dastans and is known to be an authority. And it is through him that his nephew, Mr. Mehmood Farki, who also happens to be our coach, our mentor. Uh, he got acquainted with Dastan Goi and uh, in his own words, when he first uh, uh, got, got in touch with Dastan Goi through Mr. Shamsul Rahman Farooqui, he was absolutely smitten with the text. The text, in his words, was crying out to be read aloud and thus started the process of this revival that we are talking about today. Uh, Mehmood Farooqui, for the first time with his uh, classmate from school and actor Iman Shukri Aghi, uh, performed Dastan Goi in a different format from what it was performed earlier at IIC in uh, 2004, the Indian International Center. And thereafter, for the past six years, he has been partnering with uh, Danish Hussain, another renowned actor, and his friend and his partner in crime, I may say that. And they have been doing this for over the uh, past six years now. Dastan Goi as we do it today. So what's Dastan Goi as we do it today? It's theatrical storytelling. It's a minimalist performance. It's drama without props. All we have is a stark white stage, one mattress, two bolsters, and we sit on that mattress, we recite the tales, the focus only being on the voice of the performer and the facial gestures of the performer. That is the only thing that is given emphasis and the traditional Dastan Goi format only had one performer, but Mehmood Farooqui brought in an innovation and he wrote in another performer, and so now a pair performs this Dastan Goi performance. And what happens is that they listen to each other's stories and they alternate their recitations. It's very difficult to determine where enactment stops and recitation begins, where mimicry takes over from reporting, where acting takes over from, say, narration. And this is something that I think we would like to explain uh, through an example. So, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, we will perform a very small excerpt from Dastan. Uh, this is about Amar uh, uh, when he is a kid and he is in a school, in his madarsa. And in his madarsa, he is always troubling his teachers, like I am sure 
all of us do, even though we are poor graduate students. So, uh, what Amar Iyad does is, we will be telling about that. So, Hathreen, one day when the mother is in the house, all the girls are in the house, and the Mullah Sahib is in the house, so Amar has seen Mullah Sahib's public and the bazaar has been in the house, and the girls have been in the house. और पांच रुपए की मिठाई वहां से लाकर मदर से रखी और आप सो रहा अब मुल्ला साहब ने जो उठकर ढेर सारी मिठाई लिखी तो उन्होंने ख्याल किया तो ये मिठाई आई कहां से सबको जगा कर जो पूछा उसने लाई भी जाहिर की हकीकत हाल किसी को मालूम ना था अमर को जगा कर जो पूछा तो अमर कुछ यूं कहने लगा जी बाबा जान ने न्याज मानी थी तो ये शिरीनी लाए थे, दो एक आशना भी और हंगाह लाए थे, आपको सोते से जगाना उन्होंने बेहद भी समझी, तो चलते अब मुझ से कहते थे कि जब मुल्ला साहब सोकर उठे तो इस पर फाते हम बढ़वा देना और तकसीम करवा देना और मेरा हिस्सा तो खुद ले लेना। तो मुल्ला साहब अब आप कुरान पढ़ के इस पे पूंछ दीजिए ना ताकि ये
what we require is new Dastan goes, new people. Uh, because with new people, new forms and new styles would arrive and, and, and then perhaps a new uh, way we could evolve and we could figure out how to uh, how to make these states as much relevant to our times as they were back then. Right? Then perhaps about uh, this, this question of tales, these tales are, uh, we would like to call them really infinite. We have infinite treasure trove of tales because 46 volumes comprise of 1000 pages each is really too much. But then even if you exhaust the tales, you have these ready templates which like we talked about earlier have been used with Parsi theatre, with Bollywood, the same format, the same manner. You can always have a villain, always have a hero, always have the hero's brother, sister, mother, daughter, father being kidnapped, always a saviour, the hero's friend beating up the villain. So there can be a numerous tales that you can create out of these. Yeah, that is Taking with you from what you just said, apart from the fact that we need new Dastan goes, we also need new Dastans and we are working on it. The experiments are already in place and they have been quite successful. Dastans have been written on the partition of India, on Dr. Binayak Singh, on a folk tale written by Rajadam Nekha Chaboli, and another work in progress includes Rabindranath Tagore's Gharai Bhaire. Not only this, I think another effort that has been made uh, to revive Dastan Goy is make available the existing Dastans and uh, Mehmood Farabi has recently come up with this book on Dastan Goy, which includes all the existing Dastans that we have performed and very soon the Hindi transliteration version of it will be out in the market. Besides this, uh, uh, let us also talk about uh, we need new audiences, right? We know that Dastan Goy has proved its worth with the audience which is uh, theatre going or which, which keeps track of theatre events and regularly goes to watch plays and stuff. But besides these audience, we cannot dispute the appeal of Dastan Goy to the audience that has been fed with a lot of masala in the cinema or the television. Like we discussed a little before, this that Dastan Goy is also full of a lot of masala, a lot of razm, bazm, dilasm and ayari. And, and the combination really is leaves Hollywood far, far behind. And lastly, when uh, there is also a third set of audience, which is the audience familiar with the Urdu language. This is the audience that still makes it a point to attend Mushairas or, or Shairi Mehfils whenever and wherever they are organized. So this is an audience that we need to tap. And I think to reach this set of audience, what we are doing is we are moving out of Prosenia in big cities and we are going to smaller cities like Banaras, Lucknow, Bhopal and we are trying to get these people listen to this art form, what is this all about and they are finding it interesting, that's the good part about it. Another challenge that we are trying to address is tap different audiences within a city and when I say that, the question that lies ahead of me is that can we make street corners as performance spaces as they were once were in the past. And the answer to that is something that I would like you guys to come up with.